Good morning, everybody. I hope everyone is okay. I hope you've had a lovely weekend and enjoyed some of the lovely, lovely sunshine that we had. We were very lucky this weekend to have had some beautiful weather. So I hope lots of you managed to make it outside for a walk um, or to get out in the garden um, or just to make the most of the sunshine through your windows. So welcome to this morning's assembly. It's a slightly different face this morning. I apologise that it's not Mrs Hilson. Um, you've got me instead, I'm afraid. Um, but I hope you're excited. I hope you're looking forward to the week ahead. We've got loads and loads of exciting things going on this week. And the first thing that I would like to remind everybody about is our Sophie Anderson virtual author visit, which is taking place on Wednesday. Um, we're really, really excited. I know Mrs Sullivan has been in touch with her over the last week and she's so excited um, to virtually visit our school. I know in normal circumstances she would have been physically in school with all of us, um, but she's very excited to see us all virtually um, and to answer some of our questions and give us a chance to find out a little bit more about her and her book, The Castle of Tangled Magic. And I know that Mrs Sullivan over the weekend has been asking teachers to start sending some examples of some work that you've been doing at home, which can be forwarded on to Sophie Anderson for her to have a look at. And she's really, really excited about that too. So over the next couple of days, keep an eye out. We have sent a link out to the live YouTube stream um, that will be happening for half past nine on Wednesday morning. Um, but I know teachers will be putting that on their daily outlines as well and we'll redrop it onto Facebook so that it's all there for you to find ready for Wednesday morning. So that's the first exciting thing that's happening this week. The other thing that I have heard over the weekend is that there have been some members of staff who have started putting up some of your Charlie Maxi art. So I know Mrs Thomas was busy out and about around Clumpton over the weekend and she's put up some of your pictures. Um, I know that there's been other members of staff who have come to collect some of your artwork um, and they are starting to go up around Columpton. So as you get out and about over the next week or so, please keep an eye out to see if you can spot any of the Charlie Maxey art that you did. Um, and what we would also really love to see is any photos of you standing next to some of the art that you find um, so that we can maybe start to see who finds what um, and whereabouts you have been. And perhaps you could give some of your friends some clues as to where they need to go because I don't think the teachers are making it very easy for you. I think they've got quite a wide range um, of different places that they're going to near to where the teachers live um, and near to where the members of staff live so it might be that different people find different things when they're out and about on their walk. Okay so keep an eye out for more of those popping up over the next few days and we're hoping that they will all be up by the end of the week ready for people you within school um, and other people within our local community to see as well. So that's really, really exciting. Now, today's assembly, I have got a brand new book to share with you, a book that I think if this book wasn't written for what is going on in our world right now, then I don't know. I don't know why it was written. Um, it's a really, really beautiful book. It's a short story and it's all about there being light at the end of the tunnel. It's not all bad. Um, and at the moment, we know that Lots of people probably aren't feeling their best at the moment. There's This has been going on for a very, very long time. We're in our, our third lockdown. Um, lots of you are working at home. We've got children in school, but it looks very, very different. Um, mums and dads are at home with you doing lots of your homeschooling, and it's really, really tricky. And the book that I want to share with you this morning is all about there being light at the end of the tunnel, there being hope. And it looks like this. So it's called Rain Before Rainbows. Now I can't, I cannot work out the name of the author, the lady that's written the book. She's got a very tricky name to pronounce, but the illustrator is David Litchfield. Now he's a very, very well-known illustrator. He illustrated The Bear and the Piano, which I know Mrs. Hilson has read to you previously. And on the back of the book, the blurb, it simply says this, in the mist of the rain, rainbows can be hard to see, but with courage, and the help of good friends, there is always a way out of the darkness. So it's all about there being rain before rainbows, light at the end of the tunnel, there is hope. So I'm going to share it with you this morning, and then I'm going to set you a little challenge for you to have a go at completing over half term. Okay, so I hope you enjoy it. It's not got very many words, but the message is really, really important and a really simple message too. A beautifully illustrated book. So I hope you can see that I'm going to move over a little bit. Rain before rainbows, clouds before sun. 
Night before daybreak, the old day is done. There are mountains for climbing, journeys to take. Dreams that are hopeful, decisions to make. Look at that beautiful illustration. I hope you can see that reflected in the light. Dark days may shake us and worries creep in with dragons to duel and battles to win. It's all about adventure. It's another beautiful picture. If you look closely, you can see all the different creatures hidden amongst these waves. Thunder will rumble and lightning will flash. The wind will start blowing and tall waves will crash. But there are footsteps to follow and words that are wise, a map that will guide us when troubles arise. Friends who will help us, courageous and kind, a rope to hold on to, and treasure to find. Sowing and planting, roots before shoot, stem before flower, leaf before fruit. Rain before rainbows, clouds before sun, night before daybreak, a new day's begun. A day full of promise, a day full of light. The morning is breaking. And the morning is bright. It's a really, really beautiful short story. It's very, very new out. I know I pre-ordered this one and it arrived one day last week. So it's called Rain Before Rainbows. And this is the name of the author here. And it's illustrated by David Litchfield. And as I said, that's a really, really simple message, but a message of hope um, that things will start to get better. And I know lots of you, lots of you will know that things do seem to be looking up and they do seem to be getting better. Um, and it's really, really important that we we see each day as a new day um, and that we're moving a little bit further forwards. So things things will get better, I think, is the message that is shared in that book. So what I would like you to do over half term, I we feel it's really, really important. We've got a week left um, of our homeschooling or we've got a week left of our key worker bubble learning before we take a break for half term. OK, and we think it's really, really important in that half term break that it looks different to how it's looking at the moment. OK, and I know teachers feel exactly the same. We know that by the time we get to a half term break, we need things to look a little bit different to when we're working from home or when we're teaching from home or when we're learning from home. We don't want to have that same sort of feeling. We need a really, really nice break. And the trouble is, with everything that's going on at the moment, Normally, your half term would be packed full of loads and loads of exciting things. So we hear of children on their way to flip out or they go into town or they go shopping um, or they visit the park with their friends or they go and visit their cousins somewhere much further up the country. There's Normally, you would be out and about doing hundreds and hundreds of lovely, lovely things. And we know that this half term is going to be a little bit different. OK, a bit like during the Christmas holidays. It wasn't quite the same. We couldn't get up to the things that we normally got up to. OK. So I'm setting you a little bit of a half term challenge, OK, a challenge that you can complete if you wish. OK, and you can adapt this and you can make this look a little bit different to fit around you. OK, so it's our Willow Banks half term bingo challenge. OK, and I have set a number of different activities that I would like you to have a go at completing while you are at home during half term. OK, and they are really, really simple things that you can do from home or that you are allowed to do with our lockdown restrictions, okay? So I'm gonna make sure that I upload this. This will go up onto the website for you to see. You can print a copy if you like, um, but if not, it'd be really, really simple just to jot down the ideas that you can see on here. And remember, you can adapt these to suit you and to suit your family as well, okay? So it says cross off as many of these activities as you can during half term. 
How many do you think you will complete? And there's loads and loads to choose from. Okay, now I'm not sure if you can see here, but there are three boxes that are shaded in, hasn't printed very well on our printer today. There are three different um, events or days that take place in half term. Um, so I've set one of your challenges, the 14th of February, which is the Sunday, that is Valentine's Day. So one of your half term bingo challenges might be to make a card for someone that you love. So your mum, your dad, someone within your family, maybe your grandma, your grandparents, um, aunties and uncles, make a card for somebody that you love. We've got on the 17th of February, we've got Random Act of Kindness Day. And it's actually, it's a Random Act of Kindness week throughout half term. Um, but the specific day is the 17th of February. And I've put that for you to choose. Can you choose a random act of kindness that you could do to make somebody feel good? So to be kind to somebody else. And the messages this year um, from the charity that set up Random Act of Kindness are to explore the good, just made some notes here, and to make kindness the norm. So what could you do to spread some kindness to somebody? Anybody you choose, okay? So that might be a family member, that might be a neighbour that you know lives on their own. Um, it might be somebody when you go on your weekly food shop to Tesco. It might just be a tiny little gesture, gesture saying good morning, asking somebody how they are, a random act of kindness. And when you've done that, you can take it off. We've also got on the 16th of February, I know lots of you will know this date, it's Pancake Day. I think that's fairly self-explanatory, what you might choose to do on Pancake Day. And then there are loads and loads of other activities that I have set as challenges. OK, so go on an outdoor adventure. So as part of your daily walk, build a den at home, do some baking, send a message or write a letter to a friend, do a craft activity. OK, so what could you do at home that's a crafty activity? What do you enjoy doing? Once you've done any of these, you can tick them off. FaceTime a family member. Walk 10,000 steps. That's been one of my challenges for this year is to try and walk 10,000 steps in a day. So you might be able to have a go at that one, perhaps on your daily walk. Have a sleepover with a sibling. If you don't have a sibling, maybe a pet um, or maybe your teddies. You could adapt that one to fit you if you don't have any siblings. Have a screen free day. I know there's going to be lots of teachers trying this one in half term. Having a break from those screens will be really important. Help a grown up with something in the house. That might link in with your random act of kindness that you choose to do on the 17th. Have a home cinema day. Learn a new skill. I've been thinking about that one. What would I like to learn? If I could learn a new skill in half term, what would it be? And have a duvet day. That's definitely one that's going to be on my list. A duvet day with lots of films, maybe some popcorn and hot chocolate. Have a duvet day. So what I would like you to do is see how many of these challenges you can complete in half term and you can adapt these and you can change them to fit in with you and your family okay so it might be that you think oh I don't really like the idea of a crafty activity but instead I would like to have a go at this okay so you could create your own or you could use the one that we have got here okay and it would be really really nice if we could stay in touch over half term so if you get up to any of these exciting things and you take some photos please feel free to send these to your teachers so that we can see them we can share them um, over the half term break and then celebrate them when you return and when we go back to our home learning. OK, so I will make sure that this is dropped onto the school website for you to see um, and to have a copy of if you would like. And we really, really look forward to seeing what you get up to. OK, I hope you have a fantastic week this week. We've got one more week to go until half term. Lots and lots of exciting things happening, especially our Sophie Anderson visit on Wednesday. So I know your teachers are eager to get started with your learning today. So I'm going to say goodbye now. I hope you have a fantastic day and a fantastic week. And we will see you very soon.